Hi folks, what I have for you in this video is another package from eBay. And this one, again, hopefully is a four parts and not working. Um, I'm a little concerned at the way this has been packaged. It's kind of like a couple of envelopes sellotaped together and something's poking out this end. So I'm eager to get this open to see what kind of condition this has arrived in. Um, I will be a little bit disappointed if there's been some damage to this. So this is, yeah, I'm happy with this, this packaging. It's a boxed or a complete inbox Game Boy Color, um, which has got a little bit of damage to the top actually. I've definitely got a better condition box that I've had previously. So if we look at the top here, let's have a quick zoom in. A bit of a dent there. Now, probably could easily push that out and, and repair it to be honest. I don't remember seeing that in the listing. Uh, speaking of which, let me bring up exactly how much I paid for this. So this is the listing for this Game Boy Color. So to go it down, original Game Boy Color inbox with mains charger faulty. So just looking through the images, I can see it turns on, it gets power. Just a couple more images, and then the back, and then just overall, and I can see it's got the box with it as well. From these pictures, I don't see too much about the box. It's kind of just the back and then the front. I suppose now if we zoom in, I can see that little kind of dent there that you can see at the top, but overall, not bad. And I paid uh, £41, so this one was actually bids. £41 with free postage uh, for this one, so actually, uh, quite pleased with this. Box isn't amazing. It's obviously got everything with it, so I'm just going to set the box to the side for now. Just checking. Yep. So we have uh, this hot pink, which I've not actually got this colour in my collection, so it's good to add this to the collection. Overall, the shell is in really good condition. There's something down here on the D-pad. I can't quite make that out like glue maybe, but we'll have a look at that. Uh, the stickers on the back look perfect. Void if label removed, but that label can't be removed. Just, I can see some corrosion in the battery terminal already. So obviously in the pictures, they had this powered via um, this adapter, which is kind of cool. Uh, we don't I'm in the UK, so this plug doesn't work for me. I'd have to get an adapter for that to test it, but um, i trying to find if there's a make on this. Looks German. I think the text on it is German. Model Eingang input, Ausgang output. Yeah. So I think this, this is originally from Germany. So I'm hoping this isn't a reshell. I don't think it is. I'll have to double check this. Oh, and it's turned straight on. Okay. And the sound works. So, <laughs> um, it says it was faulty. Let's bring up the description again and see what exactly they were saying. So here's the description we've got uh da, da, da. mains with mains lead plugged in you can see the game running but the buttons are not responding also the batteries in the unit doesn't turn on which it just did so faulty unit excellent condition comes with mains adapter instruction booklet oh it was bought in singapore many years ago um sorry if you couldn't quite see that bought this in singapore many years ago which is interesting because it's a german game boy that they said was bought in singapore what i can see and I don't know if the camera will pick this up too well. Probably not if it'll focus. There's a bit of discoloration along the very top of the LCD. I can see it's got like a yellow to gray gradient. So we might be replacing that LCD, but honestly, it looks to be in 
really good condition. Refusing to come apart. There we go. So, ooh, it's interesting. Let's get the screw out. There we go. Set the shell to the side for now. Let's look at the board. So I can see a lot of blue corrosion from a battery there across the board. So we're going to have to do a bit of clean up here. Probably replace that negative battery terminal. Let's get the board out and see how the rest of it looks. Okay, so that would be why, oh wow, this might be quite a difficult one. We'll see how this corrosion comes up. You can see there on the buttons, there was no way they were gonna be making contact completing. Same with the start and select buttons. The D-pad looks perfect though. Absolutely no corrosion there. It's just across the start select and across the A and B button. So there's going to be a lot of uh, corrosion to clean up from this board. But it turns on and it worked. So that's always a positive. But obviously we're not going to leave it in this state. So what I'm going to do is get out some vinegar, clear up the corrosion just there, and then we'll clean up uh, as much as we can and see from there the extent of the damage and obviously this negative terminal that's going to come out uh, and be cleaned and depending if there's been any structural damage to the to the um, terminal we either replace it or we reuse it but uh, for now let's get some vinegar on the go <laughs> So I've had a good go at clearing off as much of the corrosion as I possibly can from the board. So you can see here um, on the A and B select, they're looking pretty good. Start and select is also looking not too bad. There's obviously damage left behind on the copper, copper pads where um, the corrosion was and it's obviously left damage, like I said. So I've done as much as I can. So what I'm going to do now is get rid of this negative terminal because it's still got corrosion on it and we don't want that uh, to continue to spread on the board. So all I'm going to do here is just get my soldering iron. I'm probably going to put on a bit of flux to try and help this because this will be some old solder. And maybe introduce some new solder to it just to help. But soldering iron on. I'm going to get some tweezers so I can apply some pressure down on the terminal so that when the solder melts we can kind of hopefully pull it through 
foremost. There we go, and that went flying. So I'm going to clear up all this old solder because we're obviously not going to be reusing any of that old solder for when we put in the replacement one. So for most of this, I'm going to use a solder sucker just to get rid of a good chunk of it and then clear the rest up with some solder braid. Let's get some IPA and clean up the area. Right, so the next thing to do, I've got a replacement uh, battery terminal just placed in here. And these are always so frustrating to get in. Um, so I kind of just pushed it through. It seems to be a grip fit at the moment because the legs on it are a little bit wider than the hole. So. You kind of have to have it upside down and you can't really be touching it because the soldering iron obviously heats up the terminal as well to the point where it'd be too hot to touch. So you kind of just have to hope that gravity doesn't pull it back through. I mean, we could maybe, if I had some something high enough that could hold it up against the board, I don't know. Maybe these, I'm going to try with these pliers, see if I can set them in next to it. That kind of holds it up in place. Um, and then just go ahead with the soldering iron. Let's get some, a little bit of flux on the area. That'll do. And then just start to heat up the legs and the pad, introduce the solder and just hopefully build up enough that it takes. There we go. And that seems to be just right. Yeah, that looks good. It's good enough to me. So, like I said, there's enough solder there, hold it in place. Hopefully enough solder as well to make continuity the will, the will be, I don't know why I'm saying hope seem to be pretty much in line um when we put the case on the case will end up like bending it and pushing it into place anyway so that's fine don't need to worry about that um and really from here the obviously still is the issue of some tiny little bits of corrosion in the vias which are pretty difficult to get rid of but i feel for now we're at a good stage where we could test or put this back together and start to test uh, the buttons and make sure that it works. So my camera decided to uh, overheat so I'm going to try and get this finished as quick as possible but basically I've just got the the board in, I put the back shell on and we're going to put in uh, some of the screws just because if something isn't working we only have to take out so many, uh, not all six. So I'll put in probably just three um, just to hold it together enough And let's pray it turns on. Ooh, it doesn't. Uh, let's give them a roll. You never know. Let's just roll them in there. Oh, we got a bit of power then. So I think, yeah. Um, just gonna double check and see if this turns on every time if we connect it up via uh, crocodile clips so positive on positive negative on the negative switch it in the on position and then what we should find is this just turns on in fact I'll keep that in place because it helps simulate it being switched on so on 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 yeah so our issue isn't really 
anything I've done here in terms of the uh, terminals not touching the battery, if that makes sense, or not making contact with the board. The issue lies in completing the full circuit in here. So I think what I'm gonna do is not lose my screws. There we go. Let's try and remove this from in here. There we go. See this, I mean, it's got corrosion on the surface, but it doesn't mean it shouldn't be making contact. Um, so what we'll do is I'll see if I've got a replacement. I hope I do. Yeah, that'll do, that will do. Let's get it back together. Got here Pokemon Yellow. Reads it straight away, perfect. Let's just turn the sound down so I don't get copyrighted by Nintendo, whoever it is. Okay, so. Ooh, I need a new battery in this one. New game. So I'm not really gonna be able to test many of the buttons here, but I can see B and A are working. Start, I'm currently press them. In fact, I'll burn through this quickly and we'll get a chance to test the start and select. So D-pad works fine. Let's see if I can do, let's just do T, start works. This is my grandson who I forgot his name. Let's do a new name and let's see if we can get select to work. So select, yeah, which changes to lowercase and uppercase. Perfect. So all the buttons are working. The turns on first time, every time now. Um, back to its working condition. So that was a nice easy one, pretty straightforward. Um, and it's in a great box. So thanks for watching.